So it's that time of year again. This is MTO along with the other guy here to talk about and rank the Chucky series from worst to best. All right, the Child's Play series. This is one of those movie series that I think I think is going to go down as probably one of the more like underappreciated movie series in like horror movie history. Just because, like, yeah, you're going to look at the iconic killers like Jason, like Michael Myers. I feel like the Child's Play series is, like, the most underappreciated one because it doesn't get talked about as nearly as often as it needs to. The, the, the worst movie, in my opinion, I'm going to have to agree with the general consensus, which I don't often do, is Seed of Chucky. Now, I can understand people's perspective saying, this is bullshit, this fucking movie sucked. I don't know, there's something about Seed of Chucky that was just fucking funny, you know? I mean, yeah, at that point, it just become a full-out raunchy comedy instead of a horror movie, and they just went for the cheap laughs, and uh, the reason that I don't think it's a bad movie is because I found it entertaining because of some of the funny shit that Chucky was saying. Uh, some of the cameos are funny, like when Red Man came out and was trying to fuck Jennifer Tilly. I can understand why people hate it. I myself thought it was uh, kind of enjoyable. The worst movie of the series, for me, has to be Child's Play 3. Now I compare this movie to Nightmare on Elm Street 2, where even though Chucky himself was as good as always, everything else might as well have been in a bad Disney comedy. It's not even a good comedy either. It's not that funny. It's not that entertaining. It's not memorable. It's just kind of there. This is pretty much the one movie of the series that you can just skip over entirely without feeling like you missed anything, because nothing happens in this movie. Even Seed of Chucky, which people think deserves to be retconned, is still acknowledged as more relevant than this movie was. Uh, the second worst one. Now, yeah, your argument definitely makes sense about it. Oh, it's not relevant. It They don't mention it anymore. I guess from that standpoint, okay, maybe you're not wrong. But, here's where I say that it's it actually did a solid job of doing what it needed to do. After this movie, it started getting into the raunchy side of things. And I thought the whole, the fact that it was in military school added a different element to it that kind of made it a little more interesting. There's there's just a lot of things that I liked about this movie. You know, a lot of the characters were likable. I didn't like that little black kid. That little black kid really pissed me off. He just seemed like one of those, like, Roman Reigns type of guys that they were fucking shoving down your throat and he just protected Chucky and wouldn't listen to Andy. I, I guess I can understand why MTO hates it so much and why he says it's irrelevant and adds nothing to the series, but I thought it was solid. Coming up next on my list, the newest movie, Cult of Chucky. Now, when I first watched this, I really liked it because I just kind of turned my brain off and enjoyed it for what it was. But now that I think about it, this movie was really weird and confusing. Even the tone of this movie was all over the place. The way this whole movie was directed felt like they were trying to be dark and scary, but there was so much ridiculousness in between that I couldn't tell what they were going for. Now, even though the series has always tried to balance the horror with the comedy, I think these two movies are the prime examples of how not to do that, because part three was too much of a comedy to be scary, whereas with this one, was too dark to be funny. I also have a problem with the new premise that they introduced in this one, about Chucky being able to possess anyone and anything and multiple things at a time. I think this is going to end up being one of those ideas like what happened in Curse of Michael Myers and Jason Goes to Hell that end up ruining the entire series if they're not careful with it. Now I get why they did that because Andy had Chucky's head, so they had to do something to get him to the asylum. But considering how much of an idiot Andy is in this movie, it would have been entirely possible that Tiffany just snuck back into his house to get Chucky while Andy was out trying to pick up chicks. I think it would have been just fine if they went with the idea of there being one real Chucky and one fake Chucky so that way Mika wouldn't know which one was which. It didn't have to do the multiple Chucky thing. Coming up next in my countdown, the... Curse of Chucky. You know what? They actually did a pretty good job with this. I was a little nervous going into it. I thought they were going to fuck it up. It was going to be one of those rehashes like like the new fucking Jason ones or like when they make a fucking wrong turn 37. But this was actually pretty well done. It The whole setting is it's, it's a fucking house. It's a two-story house. A girl in a wheelchair lives there. She's getting taken care of. 
Her mom doesn't think she can get laid. Not that she could probably feel anything in her vagina. Even though she's actually kind of attractive, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd hit. She gets the doll delivered to her. And then her mom dies. And then uh, shit happens with her fucking sister. Her sister's a lesbian. There was a lot of twists to this movie. And I think that's what I liked about it. The whole thing with Nika being in a fucking wheelchair, like, let's talk about that, let's talk about how good that did to the fucking series, that now, fucking, it actually makes sense that someone doesn't just pick up the fucking doll and kick it or something, like, now it actually makes sense that someone is actually at a disadvantage against the fucking doll. Yeah, the beginning was kind of slow, and it kind of brought back that ominous, like, that Child's Play 1 feel where it was really, like, methodical and psychological, a lot of people didn't really like that, um... I normally do, but for this one, I don't know, it started to kind of bore me because I thought it was going to be this just predictable, cookie-cutter fucking horror movie. Uh, Curse of Chucky was actually pretty good. If you haven't watched it yet and you're wary that it might be garbage and you're afraid of uh, remakes and shit like that, this is actually pretty well done. Coming up next on my list is The Seed of Chucky. Now, I'm not even going to bother trying to defend this movie because I can completely understand how trashy this was. But you know what? I had fun with this one. It's over the top, it's goofy, it's not meant to be taken seriously, but it's fun. And that's the advantage that I give this one over Part 3 and Cult of Chucky, is that this movie knows what it is. It doesn't try to be scary because it knows it's not, whereas the other two try to be both scary and funny and fail at being either one. So for as much hate as this gets, you have to appreciate the fact that this movie is honest with itself. So these top three, this might have been the hardest time that I had trying to figure out how to fucking rank them. I'm going to go with the number three movie in this series is the original Child's Play. That is a big fucking deal because normally, yeah, I'm one of those that's like, oh, well, nothing's going to beat the original. There's just so many fucking iconic scenes and so many quotes that you can take from the original Child's Play. What I liked is even though it's not believable, they didn't stretch it so far to the point where Picky or Chucky was fucking picking up 300 pound monsters and throwing them out windows and shit. Like Chucky was killing them in strategic ways to the point where, okay, I can see how that can happen. I can see how that can happen. And this is proof. This Child's Play 1 is proof that you can be methodical and entertaining as fuck at the same time. Up next on my list is going to be a tie between part one and part two. I think there's an argument to be made for either one being better than the other because each one has a different advantage over the other. If you're more into the high body count and big action scenes, then you'll like two better. But if you're more into the story and the psychological aspect, then you'll like one more. It's not often the sequel has surpassed the original in this series and that was not a small feat because child's play one was so fucking good but child's play two man it was just something different one thing that child's play two did do right was it gave me characters to get behind people that i didn't want to see die along with people that i did want to see die killed along with that foster dad that guy really pissed me off like I think that was that was that was one of the few first instances of my childhood where I actually cheered for the killer and wanted him to kill him. But on this one, I mean, you had fucking Kyle. I think she played the role of the heroic babyface just a little bit better than Andy's mom did, as weird as that may sound. But something was something was different about this series for me that I I just enjoyed the second one a little bit more than the first one. So up next on my list is Curse of Chucky. Now, the genius of this movie is that it's a sequel that feels like a reboot. They gave Chucky his original look back. They made him scary and mysterious again. There was no Tiffany or shit face or anything from the previous ones at first. And we were introduced to a completely new family that didn't seem to know anything about Chucky. So most of this movie felt like they were reinventing Chucky while still being able to maintain everything about the originals and give us a bunch of awesome throwbacks in the end. You could tell that this movie was actually made for the fans of the series, and that is why this is such a masterpiece. Coming in at number one. This is not just my favorite Chucky movie. This is one of my all-time favorite horror movies of all time. The Bride of Chucky. 
if Space Jam was my favorite movie growing up, God damn it, Bride of Chucky was a close fucking second. Bride of Chucky is so fucking good for so many fucking reasons that I can't even begin to properly convey how much I fucking love this movie. W one of the things that this movie did perfectly was it properly balanced the raunchy comedy and the horror with the fucking Chucky character. And it really showed how fucking versatile the Chucky character really is. Like, yeah, you had the moments where he would shoot off one-liners in the original ones, but in this one, Chucky was hitting zingers left and right, along with still being fucking scary. Like, it just worked. It worked so perfectly in this fucking movie. Jennifer Tilly was introduced to this series, who, by the way, I think this was her first appearance in the entire series, and now she's become symbolic of the Chucky series. That just tells you how fucking good this was. And it's just from, from start to finish, there's nothing you can really say that's bad about this movie. I don't care what the fuck any of the expert movie critics will tell you. I don't care if it's, I, I don't even know if it has a bad rating on Rotten Tomatoes, but if it does, fuck Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes is dog shit. Those are the smarks of movie reviews. They're fucking, I hate Rotten Tomatoes. They're pieces of shit. The best movie of this series is easily, without question, Bride of Chucky. Now, this is exactly what a Chucky movie should be. It's that perfect post-Scream era type of movie that doesn't take itself too seriously, but doesn't make a complete joke out of it either. Add that to the fact that everything in this movie makes sense, from Tiffany and Chucky's relationship to the main character's progression. Even all the kills made sense because they're not just going around killing a bunch of random people. They're only killing people that get in their way. This is just the perfect blend of everything that it needed to be for a Chucky movie. So that is why I would say that this is not only the best Chucky movie of the series, but this is probably one of the best put together sequels of any horror franchise. Yeah, man, fuck Rotten Tomatoes. They have it ranked as a four. You know, this is what I hate about Rotten Tomatoes. Fuck these motherfuckers. These fucking people that go on there and review this shit, acting like they're fucking experts and shit. Acting like, oh, well, the lighting in each scene wasn't properly conveying the tone in which Chucky's character was being shown. Who the fuck gives a shit? Watch the fucking movie. I hate people that do that. I hate people that nitpick that shit and break it down like that. That's so fucking annoying. Like, dude, you're not Wes fucking Craven. You're just someone watching a fucking movie. Review it like any normal person would review a fucking movie. This is why I hate... Fuck that. You know what? No, this is turning into a Rotten Tomatoes rant. Fuck Rotten Tomatoes, alright? These guys are fucking dog shit. And all these people that go on there that review their fucking movies behind their keyboard thinking that they can cast Katherine Heigl as, like, the fucking love interest of Channing Tatum on the next Magic Mike. What the fuck is wrong with you people, you know? You people think that you can ha have these sort of fucking opinions and talk like you're a real fucking director. Like, you, you say, oh, well, Channing Tatum's body language was a little bit off in this scene, you know? As for something that was supposed to be conveyed in a way that that Channing Tatum was supposed to be in peril and afraid for his life, he re his body really told a different. Who the fuck cares? Like really? Okay, you can critique the acting. That would make a little bit of sense. But if you're talking about little shit like that, that nobody with a normal functioning mind that isn't a director isn't paying attention to, who really cares? Fuck Rotten Tomatoes. These guys are pieces of dog shit. Do not listen to them. If you're going to listen to anyone, listen to IMDB. Those are actually people that actually fucking review people, review movies like they're actual human beings. But that just about does it for this series. So I look forward to the next one. I like the idea of Andy building this army to take down Chucky and Chucky finally possessing his hot daughter. So it almost seems like the next one is building up to be the definitive ending to the series. So I look forward to it. So, uh, yeah, that was my uh, Chucky series review. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, yeah. Hope Halloween.